We just saw a film today about homeless families and seven women's plights uh, of, with homelessness in this country called On the Edge. And what we're going to do now is actually I want to open it up to discussion, really get your in, you know, what your impact was about the film, what you thought, mostly from a social work perspective. Because as social workers here at Columbia Social Work School, we really try to emphasize how we work with families uh, that are homeless and other families as well, but also the complexities that come behind a lot of the issues that uh, families are dealing with. So I would like to open it up and just ask, what are your initial impressions of the film? One of the things that really stood out for me in the film was just how impactful the homelessness is on more than just one, the one individual who's homeless. So obviously the, the movie was focusing a lot on children, but I think what's so important is it's not just the parent who is experiencing this homelessness. It is their children. It is their families. It also reaches the people that they tried to stay with and the, and couldn't stay with for very long because the houses would get too crowded or um, because they because they were having personality issues with the people they are trying to stay with. Um, so obviously, it's an issue that's affecting more than just the people that we that are visible. I thought the film was excellent when it said about homeless children, how there's so many homeless children in this country. Most people don't know that. Most people do see the, the man on the corner, etc., equate that with homelessness. And yeah, I, think, and I think the film even brought this out to say, if, we, if people knew that it was homeless children that made up the bulk of homelessness, and then possibly they do something about it. So excellent point. I think the other thing is just the, how many other issues are tied into homelessness. A lot of these women have experienced abuse or drug issues or um, sexual abuse and teen pregnancy, either with them or with their children. Um, and clearly it's just, you know, it, it's this web of issues that gets tied up in it. And I think the movie did a very good job, the documentary did a very good job of making that clear. Yeah, and I think you touch on so many excellent issues there. And one of them is the impact of homelessness. How it just isn't necessarily just the family that's being impacted. It's a, you know, the extended family, the communities being impacted as well. And also um, how you brought up the issue of how we're not really uh, targeting the complexity of homelessness as well. And I think the film brought out actually how every individual story has to really be addressed. And we know this as social workers, that you have to take every individual, every individual family as well, and address the specific issues that meet their needs on that. And that's something that isn't being done. Excellent point. I was, I was really, really glad to see that they put so much emphasis on the fact that so many shelters have the law that you cannot um, enter a shelter if you're an adolescent male, like around the age of 12. Um, and I just find that really interesting because in a, in a country that places so much emphasis on the familial unit and keeping families together, you know, we have that mantra until a child reaches age 12 and you're a male and you no longer can live with your family. Um, and I think that's one, hypocritical, and two, just says pretty big things about the kind of stigma we have against adolescent males. And you have to look at the long-term implications of what happens to those males. And if they're being placed in foster care, if they're no longer allowed to live, uh, you know, with their families, what's happening, happening to them in terms of their, um, their education? And oftentimes, those are the population of students who are going to really struggle academically, um, if not altogether drop out of high school. So. Yeah, I think that's an excellent point. I think the film really brought that out. It talked about the education as well. Uh, over 50% of uh, homeless women actually have been high school dropouts, don't have a high school degree. And I think the film really brought that out as well and talked about how education is such a critical component. And it's something that's not really being addressed on that. Excellent point. Some of the women talked about going back and continuing their education, going to college, and I think that we um, should reinforce that and make it facilitate it so that it's easier for them to do that by subsidizing education for people who have faced the plight of homelessness growing up or have been in the foster care system or lived in DV shelters. Um, you know, it's kind of sad, but education has become a luxury. It's the whole system institution has been commodified. It's now a privilege and a luxury instead of a right. Yeah, I think it, you're so right about the educational doors being closed for so many people in this country, including the homeless. And I, I found it really interesting in the film how the one woman that did go back, uh, she actually said, okay, you know, I've got my Pell grants, but this is all the loans I have to pay back as well. And uh, all of you being students, you know the impact of loans. And I mean, uh, coming from her background, I mean, I, I thought to myself when I saw that in the film, gosh, will that be a contributing factor that will drive her back, you know, into homelessness? All of a sudden she has all these loans that she can't pay.
I do think that the policy implications are really, really huge, and I think that we have to look at um, sort of this tradition in America of feeling like we can't give somebody, somebody something for nothing. Um, so many of the public assistance programs require that people work. How are you going to work if you're a single mother who has to take care of your three children? You can't. So you're not able to actually get the assistance you need because, in a way, you're being punished by a policy which says that you have to work. Um, so I think you really have to look at the morals and the ethics that are driving the policy in this country. I think that from a policy perspective, we are not being supportive enough. There's a broken system, so we're kind of working against the stream. And we need to look at something as simple as minimum wage. I believe it was Antoinette who said she was working in a hotel for $7 an hour. We are not supporting families, mothers who are working and taking that initiative to uh, turn their circumstances around. I like how you said we're working within a broken system because I think that's right. I mean, as social workers are trying to work within this broken system, I think I mentioned in the class that as far as industrialized countries, we lead industrialized countries having the most you know, homeless women and most homeless children than uh, other industrialized countries. And also how with, you know, right now, it's a, you know, since the Great Depression, we've never had to this scale uh, the enormous people being displaced from homes on that. And how we're social workers trying to struggle within that system of a lack of support services, et cetera, that we can act actually leverage. So that it is that macro level that we have to approach as well and start uh, lobbying uh, the legislature to start you know, giving more money and also building awareness. I think something that's really lacking from the social work perspective is comprehensive care. And the idea that a lot of these women, um, their stories were in and out of shelters or in and out. They had times of periods of flux. And the idea that providing a Band-Aid cure for one thing is not going to help them. So the one woman who finally had housing, but then a hurricane strikes, FEMA puts her into temporary housing for 18 months, but she says, but then what? You know, I couldn't go back to my job because of this, and I couldn't, mm -hmm. now I can't, I don't have income to help for my family. So the idea is not to just look at, well, it is to look at the individual situation, but also to provide a comprehensive plan for them so that they can get back on their feet in a realistic and feasible way. Sorry, that just made me think about the woman who wanted to get her tubes tied after it, and I couldn't believe that the healthcare system she was working within basically told her, we're not going to bother with you. So it's these systems that are supposed to support you. Not only are, did she not find the support she needed, she actually was turned away from and really marginalized by the system that's supposed to be there to help her. I was really struck by, in the film, the, um, the fact that so many people kept saying this echo of, you know, I really, I wore out all of the social connections that I have and this loss of social connections. And what do you do when you've worn all of those things really, really thin and you have nowhere else to go? Mm -hmm. um, so I think you know, it's also really important to recognize the impact of um, social network to homelessness. The film really brought up uh, one of the big issues that I always get when working with the homeless. It's like, well, you know, why are you staying in a motel? Why are you staying in a hotel? If you can afford that, why don't you just you know, have your own apartment? And it's about getting that, that bulk of money together to actually do that down payment, et cetera, and the, you know, security and different things of that nature and how you can't, how hard it is to really get that together, to get back on your feet. I really liked how they touched on how traumatic these people's experiences have been and that you can't just give them low-income housing and they'll be okay. It's a lot more complicated than that. There was something that was really important to me in the film. Uh, one woman who said it at the beginning at the end, and at the end was, when answering the question, if you'll ever be homeless again, she said, I don't want to be homeless again. I'm going to try to never be homeless again, but I can't say I'll never be homeless again. And with each of the women, there was this um, kind of this specter of it, it can happen at any time, um, no matter the circumstances. And I think the, the perfect um, example of that in the film was there was a woman who you could argu arguably say was the most successful. She had been... Um, and she had had a home for 11 years. She was working in the agency that helped her out, and she was doing very well. And at the end of the film, she lost that job because of health problems. Um, and as of the film, I'm assuming that she was still had her home, but all of a sudden that reality is going to be flooding back to her. She no longer has her job, and, that, and that's obviously one of the many security factors to avoiding homelessness. And I think it's just something that um, 
the aftercare is such an important part because we can't just say once once you have the housing you're fine or once you have the job you're fine or you know once you have any of these benefits you're fine it needs to be something that is regularly monitored um, by the person but you know also by agencies to help um, make sure that you never do fall back or if you do fall back for something like health problems or a family crisis or a hurricane mm -hmm. That's not going to, something that's beyond your control isn't going to send you and your kids and your family back into this vicious cycle of homelessness. Yeah, I think, actually, I think the film did a good job of bringing up the point that all of us are just close. I mean, my family is on food stamps, and we were very close to losing our house when I was in high school. So it's a, the same thing. I mean, we're in, you know, health issues. Different, how many people, as social workers, have you worked with that have spent thousands of dollars, all their savings, et cetera, because somebody became ill in the family. All these different issues can drive you into that state of homelessness. And I think the film also uh, mentioned that and said, you know, we're all kind of, some of us are just one paycheck away from being homeless. And I like how the film did show that, how proactive uh, the women were to really actually get back on their feet, you know, to find stable housing, you know, to really kind of, you know, have more of a normal life to get back uh, to where, you know, some of them were before or some of them had never been before. The film brought out, too, the stressors of being homeless mm -hmm. and also the homeless children, being raised in environments of unpredictability, violence, and how also a lot of times that's a contributing factor right. to uh, mental health issues yeah, as well. Yeah, definitely. Any other comments? What do you think? Wrap it up? Wrap it up? Excellent job. Gosh, my class did great. Excellent job.